We're now on the line with Dr. Zev Zelenko. Oh, sorry for the quality, but uh, we're here on the line now. Shalom. Hello, Shalom. Thanks for having me. So first of all, tell us about your decision to leave uh, your community and your clinic in Kiryat Joel, Kiryat Yoel. It's not that's an internal issue. It's not something that I want to discuss, and I think you should focus on COVID-19, rather. It has nothing to do with the COVID-19? Um, it has nothing to do with that, yes. I will, I will say one thing, that uh, Kiryat Joel had the lowest death rate of any Jewish com uh, community uh, in America. And that is thanks to your treatment? Uh, I'll let other people make that uh, conclusion. Did you give hydroxychloroquine to your patients there? Of course not. That's where I practice. That's, that's, the, uh, that's my uh, practice uh, data generated from treating patients in Curious Joe. So first of all, explain to us, uh, you know, we're looking from, from kind of from afar. Why all the politics around this medication? You know, it's an interesting line of questioning you're having. Um, you're talking to the doctor who developed a treatment approach that uh, you will see very soon when scaled globally will end this pandemic. I would think you would want to know more about the, the science, the actual treatment, how to publicize it, how to really end the death and the misery and the suffering and the economic cr disaster. I, I would suggest that you focus something on, on that instead of trying to get me into politics political rhetoric no, I can not. give you reasons I can give you reasons why there is resistance it's very simple there it's called politics profit arrogance and fear uh, politics uh, you don't have to be a rocket science scientist and I've actually m mentioned this hundreds of times in the interviews that I've done that the president is in support President Trump is in support of this uh, treatment it's an election year if he's right it's a political win and uh, half the country in America does not want him to be president. So they are ready to uh, tolerate financial ruin and mass casualties for the purpose of uh, destroying the president and, and ga gaining power themselves. That's number one. Number two, as you know, um, there are big pharmaceutical um, conflicts of interest here, or uh, many companies invested tremendous amounts of money in uh, advanced treatments like remdesivir or uh, vaccines and so on. And uh, if when, when, not if, when uh, my treatment approach is scaled globally, that'll take away 95% of their market share. Um, that would uh, disrupt a multi-billion if not trillion dollar industry. And I'm sure they're not happy about that. Number, number three, there's a lot of arrogance in, in the in the medical world, and they can't believe that some Hasidic doctor in upstate New York, uh, who's a primary care doctor, not even a researcher, uh, came up with an approach that blows everything out of the water where the biggest academics in the world couldn't come up with that. Their arrogance will not let them tolerate that. And number four, the fear of physicians uh, prescribing these medications and, and the, uh, the fear of retribution or, or liability from being sued because of the litigious nature of American society. And one of the most important things that you are saying is don't wait, treat quickly. I'm not suggesting anything different than what is done in every single aspect of, of medicine, which is treat early. No one lets a, a fire get out of control before they start putting it out. You, it's easier to put out a small fire than a big fire. When someone gets uh, an infection, we don't wait for them to be half dead before you start treating it. Uh, only when it comes to COVID-19. In other words, if you look at the um, CDC guidelines for the treatment of influenza, it says treat within 48 hours with Tamiflu or, or other antivirals. Why? Because that's when you're supposed to start treatment. The sooner the better. Same thing with HIV, same thing with herpes, same thing with any infection. So why is it when it comes to uh, COVID-19, that the entire world is focusing on building respirators and you know last attempts uh, last ditch e efforts when the patient's intubated and already has a 70 percent chance of dying it's completely moronic and it completely makes sense that when someone comes in to the office at a primary care doctor the treatment should be initiated immediately then and i'll tell you why because the first five days of Within the first five days of when symptoms start, the viral load or the amount of virus is relatively 
stable, constant. But around day six, it explodes like a wildfire. Now, most patients don't come to the doctor right away. They come around day four or five. So when a, when a patient comes to the doctor, they're really feeling sick, but they're not that sick. And it's now day five. That's still a good opportunity to intervene. But what happens is we, if, if you wait till the results of the tests, which take three days, you get into day eight. And what happens by then is the patient is really sick. The fire is out of control. So the key is to treat based on clinical suspicion. Someone comes in and you think they have it, you could do the test. That's not a problem. But treat. Treat immediately. And then if the test comes back negative, you could always stop. But to let someone um, who may have the infection walk around for another 72 hours until they become really sick, end up in the hospital, is, is evil. So Dr. Zelenko, where are we going? What's next in terms of this virus? So look, um, first of all, this virus is here to stay. It's not going to disappear. It'll probably end up in some way behaving like the flu. So it'll be around. It'll probably mutate as well. Um, now, that's okay, though, because um, if I'm, I'm publishing data uh, with two world-class German researchers, my data, uh, in, in 10 days to two, 10 to 14 days, and uh, hopefully in a New England Journal or JAMA or maybe Lancet or something like that. And that data will show that it's going to be the first data set uh, that shows statistical uh, analysis of outpatient treatment, meaning tre treating patients outside the hospital. My data will show that if you initiate treatment within the first five days, you have an 85% reduction in death and hospitalization. What that means is that this, this infection becomes no, um, no different than any other infection. In other words, someone gets, uh, gets sick, they're high risk, they go to the doctor, they get medicine, they go home, they sit home for a week, they're miserable, they get better, and they live, and they go further. That's what's going to be. Um, and the other thing is this medicine costs $20, and it's oral. And it's one of the safest medications in the world, safer than Motrin or ibuprofen, uh, safer than Tylenol. All this um, fear mongering uh, and the false narrative of the me of the medical community. You know what happened to medical research? It got sick. Medicine and science got diseased because it's no longer about objective truth. It's about uh, uh, supporting a false narrative. In other words, the studies that are being designed are being designed to fail. So, for example, the VA study in uh, in America. They did it on patients who were half dead, uh, 17 to 20 days in the hospital, uh, intubated. And, of course, the medication is not going to work then, you think? And, but what they did was, that, it was true, it didn't work there. But what they did was they said, well, this medication doesn't work anywhere else. That's a logical fallacy. It's intellectually dishonest. Because perhaps in the first two, three days of the disease, it works very well. How can you make that conclusion? So all these studies are designed just to create a false narrative and create fog and confusion and fear so that people are steered away from the $20 treatment and take the $1,000 treatment, you understand? And also that the Trump doesn't get a win. It's unbelievable the mass murder and the, and the corruption and the, the evil that's been perpetrated on humanity, crimes against humanity, by uh, so-called scientists and so-called politicians. So history will prove who is on the right side of history and who's on the wrong side of history. And um, you can, you can, you, you can, I invite anyone to prove me wrong. Go and prove me wrong. The, this medication, when scaled globally, will end this plague. Dr. Zev Zelenko, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks.